All right, so welcome to another what's going to be a Tesla fashional here. I'm going to buckle in and I'm going to go ahead and hit the brake and seat resets. That's always kind of a fun treat when the seat resets like that. You can kind of play around with it a little bit. All right, we're going to pull out of here. Today's Tesla fashional, we're going to actually be driving uh, as we're talking about the, uh, the car. And my Tesla fashional topic today is about the car itself and some of the things that I think about it, um, given... Uh, you know, a recent sort of thought I was having, and this was this had to do with a couple of things that came up. So the first one is the most trivial, and that has to do with the autopilot feature and the fact that I don't have autopilot on this car. For some reason, I, I had this mild annoyance about that that I don't have auto, have autopilot on here, and it's not that I really need autopilot or feel like I want to have it. I'm still not ready for it, but it's that that moment when I started thinking about. One of the coolest things about this car is the fact that it almost self... No problem. So the first one I come up with is the fact that uh, this car doesn't have autopilot. And I'm okay with not having autopilot, to be honest with you. I'm really okay with... Uh, let me start that again. All right, now that we're all buckled in and ready to go, we're going to do a little Tesla professional as we're driving here. Woo! Um, so today's Tesla Fashional really is a three parts to it, and it's something about what I was thinking about the car as I started to think about some things that were going on, and specifically kind of my own feelings about uh, a couple of features and things that are with the car, and you'll, you'll get it in a minute. So the first thing had to do with the fact that I don't have autopilot, and I'm okay without autopilot. It's not something I need to have, and you know, the extra money on it kind of is in that maybe not worth it sort of range, but as I think about it, uh, you know, it's kind of one of those cool features that you really, <laughs> it's one of the reasons to buy this car. The car is a cool spaceship, but without the autopilot, it's missing something. It feels like it doesn't have everything it should have. It feels like something's missing out of it. Not that it's a bad thing necessarily, it's just sort of missing something. And um, as I think about some of the features that the car doesn't have, you know, some of the things it doesn't do, um, the way it works a little bit, the fact that I have an older piece of hardware in the, uh, in the operating system, uh, in the computer, uh, so that it doesn't actually do the, uh, can't actually recognize everything, mild annoyance. Um, you know, so it's kind of one of those things where it's like, wow, did I maybe not get everything I wanted because I didn't get the, the autopilot. I could still pay for it and still get it, and I may at some point, but for now, I'm still okay with uh, where I am. Uh, the second thing has to do with insurance on the car and the fact that, you know, I got my insurance bill the other day, and here we go again, you know, it's another couple thousand dollars for insurance, and uh, Florida has a high insurance rate because there's a lot of accidents that happen in Florida. And this is considered a luxury car, so therefore the uh, cost of insurance is a little higher. Now, I could probably shop it around and maybe bring the rate down a little bit, but overall my rate is going to be a little higher, certainly higher than it was when I drove my minivan. Um, and, you know, every time I get that insurance bill, I have that moment, like, did I make the right choice here? Um, I'm not complaining about it particularly. It'd be nice if Tesla offered their, their own insurance here in Florida, but they don't yet. So I'm stuck with using one of the other carriers for insurance and paying more for my insurance. And that's unfortunate, but uh, that's the way this uh, the system works. And, uh, you know, maybe one day my insurance rate will go down a little bit. Now, it, my insurance is completely offset by my change in uh, how, I'm, how I'm not consuming gas. Um, the fact that I don't have gas, you know, is a, a couple of hundred dollars uh, per um, per six months. Uh, what is it, like $400 per six months, so about $900 a year, give or take, um, that, um, that I'm saving on gas, and that's about the difference in my insurance. So it's a pretty good wash in that sense. You know, I love driving it, so I guess it's a fair trade. It just kind of sucks that my cost didn't go down at all. So that's kind of another mild annoyance when I got that, uh, that bill in the mail. It was kind of a, oh, are you kidding me? Um, so that was my second thing. And my third thing was, for the, I think it's the third time, I'm going to need to rent a car that's bigger to help uh, move some stuff around. One was uh, when we took a vacation and we needed to drive, you know, we're taking a drive with five people in the car uh, with all of our stuff. Uh, and then one was uh, helping my son move um, up at college, and then the other uh, is going to be helping my son move again. So I need a bigger car, so I have to rent a car. And the problem with renting a car is it's not that it's a huge deal or a huge expense or anything like that, and it's actually easier. When you're taking a vacation, honestly, in my opinion, it's better to rent a car uh, and take the vacation than it is to um, drive your own car anyway, because if there's any problems, you just call them and you say there's a problem, and that's the end of that. You don't have to worry about it as much. You still have to deal with it, but you don't have to worry about it anyway. So uh, there is that factor uh, in there. Uh, now, as far as moving my son, the, the pain in the neck factor is I got to go get a car 
I've got to, you know, live around the schedules they put around that car, and I've got to go uh, kind of at their whim. You know, I have to go with their rent uh, when I can rent the car. So if the rental car is cheaper to rent it on a Thursday afternoon from the airport than, say, a Friday morning from local, I've got to make it wor work that way. Um, and it's just, it's a stupid factor, but I had the van, and I used to be able to just drive off and go move stuff, and it really wasn't a big deal, and that was kind of a nice feature, and I can't do that anymore. Um, and that kind of annoys me a little bit. It's only been a couple of times, but it's kind of a mild nuisance. Again, it's the little things that start to eat you, eat away at you a little bit um, when I'm helping you move. So I'll go rent a car, and that's fine, and I'll help it move, um, but that's the way it works. So you have to plan a little more when you decide that you need to, to do the move, to need the bigger car. And that's not unlike planning when you're taking a road trip in this car. I love taking a road trip in this car, and it's easy because you can stop at superchargers and whatever, but it's still got that little bit of a pain in the neck factor, as I mentioned in my uh, a couple of uh, videos ago where I talked about uh, charging is a bit of pain in the neck, because it is. It's just a pain to have to go through all of that stuff and uh, do the charging and work with it just, you know, kind of a little bit of a nuisance. Now, on the other hand, Tesla does make it easy. I was talking with a uh, friend of mine. He bought a BMW i3, and he was sharing it with me. He was sharing with me uh, some thoughts about it. He showed it to me. It's a beautiful car. It's really nice. But um, he's like, look, Tesla has the supercharging network. That's huge. Because for me, I'm going to drive around town, and I'm going to park it at home, and I'm going to charge it at home, and that's pretty much it. And when I have an opportunity to charge it at one of these public charging stations, I will. But I can't go on a road trip and stop at a supercharger and do anything like that. It just doesn't work. And that moment just, you know, was kind of revelatory in a way. Because you're like, wow, I guess that's really it. Because that's really what this car is all about. The fact that it's a bigger network and that you can stop different places and charge. He goes, I can buy the adapter to, uh, to actually charge at a Tesla supercharger. And I go, yes, you can. So but there's two problems with that. The first is... You've got, to, um, you've got to have an account through Tesla to be able to bill it. And then as soon as Tesla figures out you're not uh, driving a Tesla, they can cut you off and tell you, nope, sorry, so you bought the part, and essentially maybe get two charges, one charge out of it before they tell you no. Um, so that's a bit of an issue for him uh, that, he hasn't, that he was thinking about. And he's like, yeah, that's not going to work for me either. So it's an interesting problem. Now there are more and more EV charging stations popping up. Um, I think I talked in a previous video about the fact that the state of Florida is working very hard to become a leader in the uh, EV market. And they'd like to have EV charging stations. The governor has stated, out, uh, stated that he wants to have a lot of um, charging stations around the state. He wants to have them in every rest area on every major highway. He wants to make sure that they start to show up in different places along the way, um, like, say, some of the grocery stores. We have a lot of Publix down here. It's a huge, that's where Publix started in uh, Lakeland, in the central part of the state. So Publix is huge down here. We like to have them in the, you know, Publix-type parking lots and things like that, and have more availability for charging. And um, fp and is partnering with them, I understand, to, uh, to do some of the uh, infrastructure, because fp and gets a benefit from it in some way. Um, I'm not sure, you know, where the uh, where the financial gain is, but they do get some benefit in the way that it's all set up. So there's something to be said for that, and I think that is pretty cool. And if that works out, that's pretty neat. I'm, I'm kind of excited about it because I think it changes the paradigm, at least for us in here in Florida, if it comes to fruition. And hopefully it does. Hopefully he, uh, he's able to have some success with that because uh, that's something that's kind of different here in Florida. Um, so you know, it's one of those things where. And they look at the car. I still love the car. I really do. I mean, I think it's a tremendous car. I really like driving it. Um, I really enjoy uh, being around in it. It's just it's little things that sort of bother you a little bit. I guess it's, you know, living in a brave new world and the new frontier because things are different. And uh, because things are different, it, uh, it just takes some getting used to it. I'm still getting used to it here. I've had it for, you know, several months now, seven, eight months, whatever it is I've had this car. And I'm still getting used to something. You know, I was thinking the other day I'm going to have to have my tires rotated if it's not too distant future. And I'm already thinking about, well, where am I going to rotate them? Do I take them to the Tesla dealership? Someone told me that the Sam's Club then. I'll have to do a little research and find out if that's true. Um, you know, so maybe I'll take it there. I don't know yet, but I'll figure out what I'm going to do. But I can't just take it to, you know, wherever I took my own car to. At Costco I used to take my car to. And I had a local dealership, a uh, local um, service place I used to go to. It was tremendous. And I took my car there for almost everything. But this car needs very little service other than my tire rotation. Where am I going to take it? It's trivial stuff, but it still matters. And when, it ha when it's happening and you're dealing with it, it's, uh, you have to kind of deal with it day to day. And you have to think about, well, what is it that's going to make this person for me? So that's why I find it interesting, and that's what I wanted to share with you. Nothing major here. It's just kind of an interesting thought process as I'm going through this. And I'm thinking about my car. Do I still love it? Yes. But does it, does it feel exactly like I thought it was going to feel? No. And that's the funny thing about it. I, you know, it's just a weird feeling because I still really like driving it, but it just doesn't feel exactly like I thought it was going to 
feel like it's it helps raise your blood thing, the fact that I'm doing something different. I'm seeing more and more Teslas on the road down here than I've ever seen. Um, I actually ran into another friend of mine who now has a Model X. He just purchased one, and I was like, whoa, cool, man. That's pretty pretty neat. And it's, it's interesting to see all these different people who have cars and um, want to drive their electric cars around. You know, it's, it's a uh, great environmental thing. You're doing some good. You're having some fun. You're enjoying the truck. And isn't that what it's really all about? I've always been kind of just a regular, like, just buying a car. I didn't care. Some friends of mine were having a conversation. Some other friends of mine were having a conversation about various uh, muscle cars and how much they love some of the muscle cars and some of the things that they do. And I'm not into muscle cars. I never have been. But I appreciate where they're coming from. And it's just kind of funny when I think about it, um, just how these uh, muscle cars work and some of the things that, that they do. Now, one of them, speaking of that, one of them driving the car here, and I have the acceleration set to chill right now. I'm going to back off a little bit on the accelerator, and then I'm going to go ahead and switch to uh, standard acceleration. So you can see what it looks like from a different perspective, because I don't think I've shown you this perspective before. I've had it in my phone before I've done something. Thoughts about uh, some.